Hi everyone, it's me Darlene. I am here with what I hope is a fun fabric no-sew project. I think you guys might like this. I played with this, I don't know, maybe a couple of months ago. I had an idea. I'm sure it's been done, but it was my idea at the time. And, um, you know, I was just like, I don't know. I don't know if there's any use for this. But, you know what? I'm just going to show you, and then you can decide if there's any use for what we make. Here's what you're going to need. Fabric scraps. The kind that you throw away. You want some very thin ones. You want some a little bit thicker. Whatever. It's all going to work. Thread. Thread is good. If you have scrap ribbon... Anything fabric-ish is going to work great. You're also going to need some one-sided iron-on fusible. That means there's glue on just one side. I sell this particular one in my eBay store by the yard. If you want to go pick some up, you can. I try to keep it in stock. Sometimes I run out, but I just order more. You're also going to need some Mod Podge. Just the regular plain one will work fine, and you can get this at Walmart. You can get little bottles of it at Dollar Tree, so if you want to just, you know, play with this and try it. This probably costs, I don't know, this big one, somewhere between maybe 6 and $8. It's pretty inexpensive, and you can get smaller than this. I'll have a link down below to at least Walmart, and uh, like I said, you can get it anywhere. Paint brushes, at least one, and an iron. And that's pretty much it. You might also want a hair dryer or an oven <laughs> to speed up the process. Here's how we start. We are going to cover this with background fabric. Now it can be just one piece of fabric that you cut out. If you want to do it that way, the whole background would be the same. Or you can use strips of fabric. Now this has some, you know, kind of widish strips, but this is, you know, big. So I'm going to use wider than that. I have a box like this <laughs> with like this size strips. That will be really good. You can go wider if you want. Uh, you know, the wider the strips are using a whole piece, obviously, is quicker. And uh, I'll probably be putting a lot of this video in fast speed. So I'm just going to start cutting some pieces and uh, just putting them on here. I'm going to cover this whole square. Now, I would say you practice on something small just to see if you like doing this, but then you can make this any size you want. It's really cool. So maybe I can put a piece like that there and there. You just want to make sure you do cover the edges or it will stick to your iron. So I'm just going to do a variety. Ooh, there's a thread on this and this. I'm leaving those there. Uh, you can see that I trimmed some of the things pointed just to let the fabric below show through. Do whatever you want. Now you take an iron. Oh, shit. That's been sitting, so I have to go like this so it will heat up. So hang on. I think it should be warm enough. And I'm just going to press this until it sticks. And do make sure that you have the glue side up. <laughs> it's rough, and you can feel it. I have had it upside down and it just all sticks to my ironing board cover but it's never really ruined it it just pisses me off that's all <laughs> okay let me see that should be good enough it is good enough and at this point you can trim it but I think I'm not going to because we tend to not go far enough off the edges. You know, when somebody sees an edge, they think they have to stop working beyond that point. And what makes something look natural is you want things to go off the edge. So when you trim, 
you know, you can tell it didn't stop there. It was continuing. I don't know. It's hard to explain. But I'm just going to leave it like this. Now, don't worry if everything is stuck down. That doesn't matter in this case. I am uh, going to put something here on my ironing board. I don't actually need the ironing board, but I think I'll keep it. And I'm going to put this. You just want something that you can ruin because we're going to be using Mod Podge now. I'm going to take kind of a wider brush. You know, a good place to get brushes like this, not in the craft center, in the tool department. They make tool stuff way cheaper. And uh, I like to shop there for craft supplies. Now, I actually will end up going to get a container or a little cover or something that I can put this on. But I'm just going to start, and you don't have to um, Mod Podge the whole thing right away. Like, let's just do a little bit of the center here, and let's start putting scraps on there. It's so incredibly awesome. So I'm just going to take some of these stringy things, and I don't care what color. The stringier, the better. I love it. And uh, I'm going to just lay this down while this is kind of damp. And you can work as fast or as slow as you want. Let's uh, have a piece of purple here, and I'm going to do crisscrossy things, and I'm going to pour a little bit of Mod Podge in my cover here, right here. Love this stuff. You can buy it by the gallon. That's how cool that shit is. And then, you know, you can just brush the Mod Podge on top. Now, at this point, I could go to a smaller brush especially for those little tiny pieces. And there's going to be enough coats happening that if you don't catch it right away, don't worry. And I'm just going to continue building like that using all kinds of different color scraps. And, uh, you know, if you get it upside down, that's not the end of the world. It's still pretty, but you can try it, uh, you know, try getting the print side up. Now, see, this one's going to be very busy because it has a very busy background. It might be really cool to have just like maybe three different things in the background. I don't know. It's up to you to do what you want. We're just experimenting with this, and I will be playing with it a whole lot more. Now, I was going to do one separate one just regular quilt cottons and one with batiks, but you know, for the sake of time, I'm going to make just one and I'm anxious to try some batik. So, and batik, there really is no right or wrong side. So that's always super cool. And like I said, even if there is a right or wrong, it doesn't matter. It adds, it adds, uh, I don't know what it adds. <laughs> Okay, so let me just continue doing this for a little bit. Oh, and we want to go in the other direction too. Just because we can. Okay, I have been, uh, you know, putting mainly strips. You know, very narrow, but uh, not like what I call like shreds. So now I'm going to start looking for things that are very narrow and even just little pieces like this that I can just stick for a little pop of color here and there. And I can just, you know, put these down. Um, I'm looking for more threads. I have some threads here. That's super cool. I can just, you know, put them wherever. So fun. You really, you, know, you could just do whatever you want. I just really like it when there's like interesting fibers in this. I don't have any, um, you know, ribbon ready right now, so I'm not going to do that. I have a feeling I'll be doing much more of this because I want to start making things with this that we're making. I'm actually going to be calling this plastic fabric. I don't think Mod Podge is actually plastic, but that's what I'm calling it. And the cool thing is we can cut it depending on how, you know, much Mod Podge and stuff you put on there. 
but we can cut it and I've even done a little practice piece and I sewed through two layers thick and it came out great. So I'm just going to try to hit some of these threads and stuff and at this point we can start to dry it or whenever you're ready to start to dry it you can just leave it overnight or you can hit it with a hair dryer and sometimes it's good to do that in between so you can look at it. This is all going to dry clear and then you can look at it and say, oh, maybe I need some more there or there. Well, you can put it in the oven at the lowest temperature. Mine goes to 170. Get a cookie sheet from Dollar Tree and you just put it in there for like 10 or 15 minutes. And then, uh, you know, it it's still can be a little bit tacky, but it absolutely speeds it up. So let me just work on this a little bit more and then I'll show you. I have an idea that I'm going to try. I'm going to even make um, what I'm going to call fabric dust. <laughs> I'm going to take some of these scrappiest of scraps. I mean, I really want them fine. Because if they're not super fine, then they're called confetti. I'm making up all these words. But I thought maybe if I just cut some little pieces here and there, they'll probably stick on. I don't know if I'm going to like that, though. Well, I'm sure it won't hurt to have a few of those. The thing is, is that when you go over it with the Mod Podge, you know, it, you kind of just have to dab it on because it wants to just pick them right up. And those are actually kind of staying. I'm just hitting them with the Mod Podge because there's Mod Podge under if it's still tacky. All right. I don't know if I should continue or if I should stop now. I'm just uh, all into this. I really didn't find as many threads as I wanted. I really like the looks of thread on it. I do have thread that I could put. Let me get some thread. I have so much thread. I'm going to use this. It's like a nice kind of, I don't know if it's aqua or teal. I don't know what colors are. And I'm going to just, uh, I don't know. I don't know what I want to do. Maybe just lay some of this down like like it wants to be kind of thick like this Ooh, it's kind of like a spider web everything always looks better after it's trimmed <laughs> I'm trying to make excuses here I don't know I'm just gonna lay that there and I'm just gonna try to slap it down kind of bunched up here a little bit but I don't think there are any rules I think I need more thread now over here. I'm just going to wet this a little bit more like this so that more thread will stick. Kind of just lay this down. And again, go over the edges and come back in. It's just like, you know, somebody will paint a flower and they think the whole flower has to be on the page. No. You want to go off the page. And some people don't know, you know, where to stop. So I always say put something else under, like put another piece of paper so you can actually draw the whole flower that when you take that piece of paper out, the the part that's remaining, you know, it just looks more natural. I don't know if that makes any sense. Don't listen to me. I'm high on Mod Podge. All right, I think I'm going to... Um, Probably consider this done. Not yet. <laughs> I think I'm going to put some more thread on the side here. Over here. Oh, this is so fun. I have my oven on, so I will be putting it in the oven for about 10, 15 minutes. And then I'm going to see what we've got. I left this in the oven for about 10 minutes. I don't know if it was even that long. And it was, you know, very warm. And, you know, it still felt tacky. Not wet, but tacky. I took it out. I just let it cool off. And look how flexible it is. It's so awesome. 
I think because I have a lot of thread, I don't know. I don't think anything is loose. I might just put another coat of Mod Podge and put it back in the oven for 10 minutes. So let me uh, do that. I'm just going to do this the easy way by pouring some right out onto this. And it will get clearer. Is this the gloss? I do have the gloss. There's also matte. And uh, I did check the price. I think the gloss for this size is, uh, and this is a 16 ounce, I think it was like close to $8, and then the mat was like close to $7, something like that. But yes, as this dries overnight, um, it gets clear. I think I would probably like the mat better, but I have just the gloss as far as I know. Okay, so I'm just covering that all again. And I'm going to go put that back in the oven. I took this out and again, when it comes out, it's like real flexible and warm. And I just put it right away on a table and I just go like this. I mean, you're not going to burn yourself. And, and then it cools within a minute and you have your plastic fabric. <laughs> I do want to say that if you wanted to uh, really stiffen this, also stiffen the back. I did that like a couple months ago and I had that piece forever. I don't know. Did I throw it away during my decluttering stage that lasted like three weeks? I can't even believe I would have tossed it, but I looked and I can't find it and I'm pretty organized right now. So I might have tossed it. I had done like two coats on the front and then two coats on the back and I'm telling you it was like wood you could build a house with that stuff so I'm going to trim this and let's just see now you can get yourself a rotary cutter that is used for crafting only if you want and I'll try to link down below I got this through walmart.com like really inexpensive I love this little stick rotary cutter and then I was getting the blades cheap. I only bought one pack, uh, 10 blades for like 10 bucks. That's a buck a blade. And they last me a long time. They lasted longer than the blade that came with the, I was going to say the knife, the rotary cutter. Uh, then those sold out. I talked about them and they sold out. And I think they might have some in stock, but they're a little bit more expensive now. But I'll try to link down below to that too. So I'm just going to flip this over. And I'm going to kind of follow the, um, the piece that I had cut. Okay, so I have one straight edge now. So let me put it here. So oh, that cuts so easy. And you can cut with scissors too. I don't know what the size is. I don't care. I mean, it's just to show you guys. get this out. Oh, I love it so much. Now, some of you might not care for the threads. I love the threads. I just love it. And again, you can make it a lot less busy by not having so much different, uh, so many different prints for the background. Now I'm going to show you the little piece I made today. This is all I did was this little tiny piece. Look how cute that is. Now you can see I uh, had two strips of this like blue flower background. I like that. I think I would like the background less busy. I had too much going on in the background on this one. I think this is really cool. I just love that. But I love this too. Now, one thing I'm thinking of with this kind of flexibility and not Mod Podging the back, is I would love to make some bigger pieces or even, you know, not much bigger than this, but bigger and make an awesome boxed bottom tote bag for like, you know, sometimes we don't want a tote bag where it just collapses. It's nice to have something that can stand up. Like some people use those uh, those plastic grids that you do some kind of needle work on 
and they make totes like that. It's nice, especially like if you're carrying craft supplies, you can put, you know, things that need to be stood up and not falling over. So I'd like to do that. So maybe I can do that next time. I would just already have these pieces made and show them to you. And then I can refer back to this video to let people know how to make this. And then I can start uh, making projects with this stuff. But if you Mod Podge both sides, I'm telling you, it can get really stiff. And uh, there's probably so many cool things. I just can't think of anything off the top of my head. Book covers is one thing that I can think of. Uh, and you don't have to do all this funky stuff. You can just take fabric and put it on the fusible to stabilize it a little bit and add Mod Podge. And you could, you know, just, uh, I don't know, make paneling for a dollhouse. I don't know, I'm trying to think of things. And you could make a tote bag like that too. Just cut a big piece of fusible, well, two or whatever, however you're doing it, if you're doing sides and a bottom. And then, uh, you know, put just one big piece of fabric. Iron that on, Mod Podge it, let it just dry, and uh, you can make a tote without going through all this. But I really like this. I do so much. So I hope you enjoyed this and this little piece. I wish I had the original one that I played with a long time ago. I remember saying to my patrons and YouTube members, I did a little update and I was like, oh, timer rang, time to take the fabric out of the oven. And then I just left it at, if it works, you'll see what I'm talking about or something like that. And then I just dropped the ball on it. I wasn't like all that gung-ho into it. But now I am. All right, you guys, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe. Bye.